So nowadays, from let's say 2000, the pet city has grown a lot. So pet is nowadays everywhere. We have more than 4,600 clinical pet <coughs> centers, and in mo a lot of those, they have several scanners. And this slide shows you that also cyclotrons are a lot. There are a lot of radiopharmaceutical sites that we could do these different tracers, but still most of the PET scans are done with the FPG. And that's why most of my talk is then concentrating on FPG, which is the standard. And what is the motivation from our side for this dose management is, of course, the authorities is the first. You ev everybody knows the Alara principle that holds in nuclear medicine as it holds <coughs> in uh, radiology. And then when we have this CT and PET combined, we have both doses in there. So CT gives, well, I put here two to three millisieverts. It depends how big a uh, whole body study or brain study or how good CT you have with the PETs. And with the PET and FDG, the dose is normally six to 10 millisieverts, a little bit big, big depending on the diagnostic reference levels or used activities, injected activities. And the second authority requirement is then this diagnostic reference levels that are set. <coughs> then, of course, economy plays a big part. And here we can think of the patient throughput. And the patient throughput, it's always like how much to inject, how long to scan between those two things we have to discuss how to optimally use resources. Somewhere you have a lot of patients, the FDG is coming from far away, you, have, you are, need to be quick. You try to have the scanner time as low as possible. And then nowadays you are doing these marketing issues as well, uh, like patients can choose more where they get the treatment or diagnostics within e EU. So if you have a good plan, good management system, you, good advertising, you might get some benefit out of that. And then the ethical one is for the quality of the results and personalized medicine that is talked a lot everywhere. And these red lines are the ones that are mainly involved when we are thinking about this dose management and, and dose watch for nuclear medicine. <coughs> so the diagnostic <coughs> reference levels, you can find them, this ICRP that was founded already early days in the when the radiation therapy was starting and radiology was starting. And these they give us the DRLs and they are regional, national and local authorized <coughs> bodies that give these uh, levels, depending a little bit of the country. And they claim that it is advisory, this and uh, however the implementation may be required from the other side body, not in all of the European countries, as I will show. And then uh, when I was preparing this talk, I saw that the draft of a new, new uh, is, uh, comments is on comments, and uh, will the comments need to be done by April the 15th. So if you have any comments after this session, you can directly comment there. That's what would be better. Here you can see from the radiation protection number 180, EU uh, report the DRLs, how much in different countries it is. And um, because the mapping, you see that the Nordic countries is quite a big area. So but uh, here you can see that in, in the Nordic countries, uh, they are based on mainly on our national surveys and also in the Western Europe. Some countries has adopted it from other countries sources and then there are countries that don't have it yet and here some of the levels uh, nuclear medicine comes in two parts this pet is the growing part but of course you have the conventional nuclear medicine so here is a example of one study of both on FD fdg on the top and you can see that in different countries the levels differ a bit if you go to US, I think it would differ uh, much more. I think it's higher in there. And then if you look for the technetium in one of these uh, bone scan, scan 
studies, then there is also some difference in here. Then I took one slide from our <coughs> tennis authorities, how to determine the mean activity administered. And this is one of the issues that uh, those watch could help when giving the reports to the authorities. It said that y you should have in, in the quality assurance programs uh, some uh, instruction on the assessment of how the activity administrative patients are uh, looked at. And they claim, they say that you should have uh, in those studies that are done in bigger amounts, if you are doing only a few studies a year, you don't have to follow this so clearly. But in the bulk studies, you have to take 10 patients, mainly randomly, or then <coughs> just one time period of 10 patients, and then uh, report those, and that report should be done within three years interval. And, but these patients should be the in the weight of 60 to 80 kilograms. So that gives also some constraint, and that's something that you could get these reports for different exams quite clearly from, from the system. <laughs> there is also a pediatric. You can see that there is this uh, example I, I looked from the FDG. You can see here a weight of 50 kilograms. You can calculate what would be the administrative activity when you look here, whether it is a torso or brain, you get the baseline activity and then the, the minimum recommended activity. So there is this card that we are obeying for the pediatric study. And then you could then follow with the, those what's that what these studies have been, have we been following this one. And one big issue is the standardization and harmonization. As we are having a lot of uh, PET scanners around, then <coughs> that could be, uh, that uh, should be standardized within a hospital, within nation, and within Europe. So there is a EANM, which is the European Association for <laughs> Nuclear Medicine. Uh, they have this research life initiative where they are doing this standardization work. And uh, this material is from Ronald Borlaug, who is a scientific advisor in there, and uh, these are presented every year in the EANM congresses. And you see that a lot of uh, scanners, PET CT scanners are there at the moment, and they are thinking of having other accreditations on this program as well. So the Quantitative Imaging Biomarkers Alliance, it's from the States and uh, the, uh, under the RSNA, and they have also this, uh, in their draft, this uh, line that there is a chain and each, each of these chains are part of the, the accuracy and the standardization of the whole system. And also in PET, it's quite often that you have these uh, assessments of s studies <coughs> that you are repeating when you are having uh, the therapy response for cancer, for example. And in PET, this same issue, and you can see that you what the standardization and harmonization means. It means the guidelines on uptake times, data analysis, activity, scan acquisition, parameters, all kinds of things. And again, these red ones are some things that we could report automatically with this system. And again, there is a, this European guideline for FDG PET CT studies, how to provide them, how the image quality would be matched how the quality assurance, quality control measures should be they done. And there is this SUV measures which gives then the final, for the uh, physician, the final information about this mainly <laughs> oncological studies that are scanned. I think this was the background, why the motivation for the dose watch, and then quickly what we have been doing with the dose watch. So we started in December, so only a few months from now, and the uh, next slide shows it more than there was 425 exams during this time, and single injection scans means that we inject the FGG only once. That is normal procedure. It's said in here because then we are doing these perfusion studies, and in there we have two injections, the rest and stress in some time, so 
but it's here it's mainly the single injection. We have two scanners, the DVCT and PET SAMPO. And what does SAMPO mean? Well, it means that uh, it's a money-making machine from the Finnish mythology, from our national ethos of Kalevala, few words about that. And here is an image of this SAMPO. This uh, Väinämöinen went to the north and they, they stole the SAMPO and then was escaping and then this Ikitulso came and tried to get the SAMPO back. And why it's interesting, it's also in Don Rosa's Donald Duck, Duck uh, series, quite <coughs> the same thing. And here is the SAMPO and it's kind of might <laughs> resemble a pet CT ring or something, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, here, some of the exams done with both of these two scanners by month. This is just an example of how the reporting can be done when you have metadata. These are just our studies, so it's not so informative perhaps here at this point, but just what reporting can be done. You can look how many studies per day with each of these scanners and what is the median of that, what is the activity. Well, we didn't do at this period pediatric studies, so we don't have these in there. So, but in the long run, if you have a lot of those, you can also report those in there. And these different activity by age ranges or study protocols. Here also, we have two different scanners. The study protocol of one scanner, although it's the same study, looks here, appears here, dif different protocol. So you can differentiate by that, or then you can differentiate it by grouping this. You can make in the system that you can have several different study protocols as one study protocol, and then you get better differentiation out of, out of that. And the activities administered. In this study, we had some uh, non-patient studies. I looked why the activity range of some studies were so low, but it was that we did some phantoms, and they were just put their test scans and this system does. So don't be aware of that. There are some odd numbers like no BMI, of course, with the phantom, we didn't have a BMI. So we can put this by the BMI as well. And then we can, again, uh, with some one protocol and a BMI, and then we can look different uh, radiographers, how they perform, of course, it should be always the same. But uh, you can see here, you can take from the headers or report the reports things that you might think that are of interest. And also the clinical indications. So here we had mostly oncological indications, some neurological, and this SADE, SADE here is radiation therapy planning that we are doing also some of those. But anyway, you can then place whatever you want to put in here. And uh, this follow-up is one important thing. We have uh, had made a decision that when the patient comes to a follow-up, we try to have the always the same scanner. We have two scanners, so the follow-up is in within the same scanner as the first or previous studies has been. And now we can see that within this period, all the 14 <coughs> patients that came for the second scan, they were done with the same scanner. The same protocol, hmm, this I was wondering now when I was looking, what was this? But then when they were in the pre preliminary study, sometimes they had a longer body in the protocols. And then in the follow-up study, you just looked certain area. And this was that most of these were that the axial length was shorter, and so the protocol was different. Then I think that there was one or two that was feet first, head first, and those differences, I don't exactly understand why it was there. I have to go back and see, because it shouldn't be that, but whether there was a specific reason from the patient, I don't know. And then some conclusions on the potential use of this. Those, those was for nuclear medicine, of course, when we have more and more <coughs> studies, you could do metadata analysis if you can combine different uh, pet centers or different cities, different university hospitals, then it would be even better. And then, of course, you could think of what would be the relationship with the dose and the image quality, how to mark that 
we have not, there is not yet this solution, but that's for the future use. And these reports, both for quality control, quality assur assurance purposes, and then follow-up studies that we see that uh, this best patient assessment is the best all the time, <coughs> and the para parameters are the same. So this is just a start, and there is still a lot of ice-breaking work to be done, and this is the group from Turku and from the G that has been helped a lot, and then an image from my summer cottage where the ice was still there when I left. <laughs> Thank you for Thank your you, attention. Thank you, Mika, for your presentation.